Hey guys, I have behind me here the 13,000 watt off-grid battery inverter uh, solar setup that I built a few weeks ago. I've been reading online a number of people are having issues with these inverters, in particular communications between the inverters and the battery bank. The inverters themselves work great. It seems to be a communications issue. And a few people had asked me in the comments of my videos if I was having those problems. And uh, in some of those comments, I sort of said yes, but I didn't really want to get into it too much because I was hoping I'd have a solution and I'd be able to say, here's the problem, here's the solution, you know, here's what you do to fix it. Uh, so you'll notice behind me here that the power system is turned on. Uh, however, only the display is working on this inverter. So these inverters are still operating. I'm getting power out of both of them. I'm getting the 120-240 split phase. Apparently, I just killed the display on this one. So today we're going to talk about what I think the issue is and how we got to this point. Uh, so I purchased these inverters both from Watts 247, but I purchased them separately. This first inverter on the right here I purchased in January of 2022. And the second inverter I purchased, I think it was like May or maybe late April when I decided I wanted to do a split phase setup with them. So when I started playing around with these after that last video, I noticed that I could only get communications working with the inverter on the right. And I was having issues getting communications working with the inverter on the left. So I had believed at the time that it was a firmware problem. So I did take some clips while I was tinkering around with these before I broke this inverter. So I'm going to show you a clip here how it works on the good inverter. Uh, so the way this is supposed to work is we go into the settings, the uh, battery type, which is setting number five. We want PYL for Pylon Tech. It's a protocol, Pylon Tech protocol. There we go, PYL, Pylon Tech, enter, and then escape to save. And then we should be able to take our RJ45 communications cable from our SOK battery and plug it directly into the port marked L ion or the BMS communications port. And pretty quickly, you can see the battery symbol started flashing there. That indicates it is communicating with the battery. Now you do see it is throwing uh, warning code 70 here. And according to the user's manual, a warning code 70 just means I need to do a complete charge of the battery. That doesn't really matter for the purpose of this demonstration. I can show you that it is properly communicating with these batteries. And you see, it's easy. There's really not much to it. You just pick the setting and plug in your battery. And here's what happens when I try to do the same setup on the other inverter and we see the battery icon on the display is not flashing, which means it is not communicating with the battery. And after we've left this run for a few minutes, uh, I now have error code 61, and uh, according to the manual, that means the communication is lost or has not been established. So of course, first thought is it has to be a firmware issue. I've seen a number of people talking about updating the firmware. Uh, so to check the firmware on these, you can press the, is it the up button? Yeah, up button. So there are uh, three different versions here. You see we've got U1 is set to 45.07. This is the firmware of the inverter itself. Then we have U2 is 12.13 and that's the firmware of this display. And then lastly we have U3 which is the firmware of the Wi-Fi and it looks like we have 0.0. .0. I don't know what that means. I haven't tried to use the Wi-Fi and I'm not using the Wi-Fi. I don't care about the Wi-Fi. I'm concerned about these first two, uh, U1 and U2. On the inverter that is not working, we have uh, version 69.02 for U1 or the inverter's firmware. We have version 112.14 for U2 or the flash display, the remote display's firmware. And we have version 0.0 for U3. Now, I don't know what firmware was on this one originally because I've tinkered with it quite a bit since, back when I was working with the jack per battery. I do think it came with version 45, but I think it was a slightly lower revision, and then I had installed version 45.07. But this inverter, the one that's not working, still has the original versions that it shipped with. And that's quite an odd difference to have 12.13 and 112.14. It's almost like this was supposed to be 12.14 and somehow it got to be 112.14. It just seems like an odd, an odd difference between the two numbers. So I did reach out to Watts247 twice. They responded very quickly and Ian sent me the uh, latest firmware he has, which is version 45.07. And I suspected there was a newer release available uh, because I've seen some firmware floating around on various forums, but I didn't want to install something really from a forum that I didn't really know where it originated. So I had also reached out to MPP Solar to see if they can send me their latest firmware. They have since not replied. It hasn't quite been a week yet, so they might still reply, but I'm not really betting too much on it. I did ask Ian at Watts247 if he could reach out to them since he is the US distributor of their products. Uh, it's not like a customer asking, it's an actual distributor asking. However, Ian told me he has asked three times and they have yet to provide him with the newest firmware. 
So I know 45.07 works, so I thought, okay, I'll just downgrade the newer inverter to 45.07. I don't need a new firmware. I need a firmware that works. I don't care what version it is. But apparently you can't downgrade the firmware. Now I have upgraded this one before. I flashed it to the new version. I've reflashed it a few times since. I know the procedure. I tried to flash the inverter's firmware on the newer inverter, and the program just sat there and it timed out. Now after a while of waiting, the buttons became clickable again, so I just clicked exit and moved along. I then thought, okay, maybe I have to update the display panel first. So I tried to flash the display panel back to 12.13, since that is the version on the working inverter, and that's the version that Watts247 provided me with. Uh, so I plugged in my cables, and you can see it's just the standard, uh, standard serial to uh, RJ45 that comes with the inverter. And then I'm using a serial to USB adapter with an FTDI chipset to the computer. And this is the same cable I use for a lot of different tasks. I use it for, you know, the firmware in these inverters. I use it for my PCM60X charge controllers. So when I started loading the firmware for the remote display, the display dimmed down, which is what it usually does while it's loading firmware. And the application on the computer just hung. I let it go for at least a good 10-15 minutes and it was still sitting there. It didn't do anything and it said zero blocks written so I figured okay it must be stuck and I went and rebooted it. Now I work in IT. I am very familiar with firmware updates and you know BIOS type things and I know you're never supposed to interrupt an update in progress. Um, however from my perspective the update didn't even happen and it wasn't doing anything anyway. When I went to restart the inverter I turned it off and turned it back on and now I found the inverter starts up but the display no longer works. Um, so I guess I bricked the display. I can't, there's no way to hard reset it that I can find. Uh, it's not responding to any firmware upgrades at all whether it be the display or the inverter itself. Um, the computer can't even establish a connection to it. The power button still works but the actual display appears to be dead. This kind of sucks because I spent a lot of money on these inverters. Some people think everything gets you know, sponsored for free and that's not the case. I spent money on them just like anybody else would have. So I guess the next steps are I can see if I can purchase a new remote display from either Watts247 or MPP Solar. However, I don't, I don't really like the level of support that's being provided by MPP Solar. All that being said, I kind of wish I would have purchased the Signature Solar EG4 version of this inverter. I've always been a supporter of MPP Solar, but this is just frustrating. When I purchased this original inverter, the EG4 inverters were not out yet. I later learned that they were coming. However, I had already had one of these, so I figured I would purchase a second matching inverter. So if I want to switch to EG4, I have to go purchase two whole new inverters, another $3,000 for two inverters. Could just get a new remote display if they'll sell me one, but then I'm stuck with communications issues, with not being able to get firmware updates. I don't need communications to the battery. A lot of people seem to think you do need communications. You do not need communications. These will work just fine without that communication link. However, I purposely wanted these inverters because they can communicate. And I do plan on doing some things with these inverters and my Batrium BMS in the future. Uh, now the EG4 does have more advantages as well. It's got a 500 volt charge controller where these are limited to 250 volts. But yeah, I will reach out to MPP Solar and see what they say about this issue. In the meantime, I wanted to publish this video to let you guys know that there was a problem. And a lot of times you guys have solutions and I learned a lot from the comments. So. I'm hoping maybe one of you out there might know how to fix this, this display issue and reflash it. If you do, please let me know in the comment section down below. Um, any other questions or comments, you can leave those as well. If you made it this far, thank you for listening to my long ramble rant. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.